Steve again. Uh, got another one for you. It's been a little while again, but uh, hopefully this one will turn out all right. I've got a 26 tonne dust cart with an oil leak. It's a Dennis Elite 6 is the model. So unfortunately it's fully loaded. I don't have a chance to get it to uh, the tip before the problem come. As you say, it's an engine oil leak on this. So it's a um, single drive at the back and uh, I believe the middle axle uh, isn't a steer on this. It's quite unusual. A lot of the later ones have got rear steer. This is one of the older ones um, with the mid steer axle. So it's, has got some uh, rubbish on the back. So it is air suspension all round. So I was able to drive it um, just around the corner from where the depot is to give them a bit of room to park their vehicles up. They've got a few drivers coming in now from a shift. So with the air suspension, it has got a little uh, lift on there. So as you can see, it's lifted a little bit higher than what it would do normally in its uh, uh, ride height for running. This is the main air point and this is the front. I'll just make sure it comes up all right. Done a couple of bits um, beforehand, just get me stands and that out. But you see, I'm not sure what forks I'm going to use till I get it lifted. So uh, we get it lifted off the ground, get it safe, and we crawl underneath there and uh, have a little look uh, what forks are best. Yeah, I'm in Southwest 8 this afternoon and it's going across London uh, to NW10 to the workshops. Yeah, it's quite an old one actually this one uh, hence that's why it's uh, not rear steer so so it's had a little bit of a hard life but you say coming down the streets of london all right just getting underneath this uh metal pan where the anti-roll bar are is should say it's a couple of chunks out there we'd just be picking up on that that will save lifting up on the engine tray, forcing that up. So handbrake is on, it's checked. So there's only one pipe to the front wheel, so the handbrake don't work on the front. Dirty old weather at the moment, hence that's why the truck's dirty and uh, my one of this as well. Right. Put a dropper down on here. Right. I've done one of these old ones for a while, so I have to have a look, see what's the uh, best forks that suit the axle. So we're picking up on the axle. Let's crawl under here. Let's have a little look. This is the axle. Might be get between these uh, U bolts dropping down, or just before, maybe just before where the axle goes. Uh, changing thickness. Might be able to use me old fakefuls in there. Let's bring the boon in a little bit. Now I isolate that off. Let's get me old favourites. Don't use them very much now, but they're quite handy if, if you've got quite a narrow axle like this one has. Right. There you go, spot on that is. There we go, it won't slide any further than that. Yeah, it's quite narrow here, this little bit of the axle, so if you had much wider fork, it would uh, slop around a bit. I think that's where we go. Took it down a little bit. Have a trial run with this. Oh, 
There we go. Back a little bit, so somewhere that's a thicker bit that's so which you probably can't see. Let's just slide that out and have a little look. So she fits in nice. Yeah, that, that's fine. It's clearance on the crosshead, so that's not gonna foul that. We do the same the other side. Then we'll be able to get it up a bit higher then. Slide under the truck. Get your hands well clear, don't be touching anything between the boom and the axle. Let's have a look. How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking good to me. Right, okay, we'll lift that up. Let's get myself clear. Forehand. Right, up we go. Lift it a little bit higher than what I would normally do because say the puddle's in the road. What we can do, now we've got it lifted. I'll put the stand the other way, just as a emergency. Not so much that the boom would drop, is possibly an airbag on the truck would go, then obviously it would drop down. So just drop that down a little bit more. So it's just just hovering above them stands. Well, let's get a couple of chains. As you see, it's pretty grim weather and the truck's a good example of how poor the weather's been. So what you can also do, I believe they're uh, showing that now on courses, if you've got a big bit of timber, you can place that under your boom, so anything should fail, hopefully we're well covered there that we're not going to get crushed. Right, all isolated off. Let's have a look, see what we can. Uh, shame we. There we go. It's a nice puddle we're trying to avoid. Let's just show you one side while we got the torch. There we go, we've gone round the top of the axle and down. And I'm just pulling to the side so that will stop it sliding as well. There we go. That's one side done. See if the axle is fixed. Appears to be, can't see any uh, steering joints or steering arms. I don't always said it doesn't turn very well. It, it won't, will it? If the axle will not steer. See, that's why most of the dust carts now are rear steer. And the middle axle is the drive axle. Anyway, we get the aft shaft down here, the 21 mil uh, bolts. All right, 
won't be getting underneath there no more. Drive. Safeguard in the gearbox. Yeah, 21 mil these. One bolt in to get my rags ready. It's a little landmark for anybody. Royal Mail Pevensey Place. So uh, I think we're SW8, the area in London. Catch any oil coming out. I think this might be sealed, so that's why I've got my hammer to give it a bit of a. Yeah, it's well sealed, that is, with silicon at the back. Black silicon. I've used to seal that stuff in the uh, oil seeping out. I will refit the half shaft at the other end so they can drive it, but they might watch just want a couple of bolts in so they can park it up in the workshop and, uh, and they'll probably reseal the half shaft themselves then. Oh, yeah, plenty of silicon on that. Wow, pure rubber that is. Yeah, we definitely weren't going to leak. Go. Only one split set of splines on there. It's just been parked up a little bit so the oil's cold so I'm not losing any oil in this. Put a bit of blue roll now. hole. Down. Yeah, fortunately I haven't got a cover for these uh, these older uh, Dennis dust carts. Right, let's have a bolt. Don't lose that. All right, that's the half shaft removed. Little connector there, so it pushes in to that, but it will leak out. So, the foot on the one end. This will make sure we got. If it's going to leak out, we can put air in. There we go. The air coming out there. There we go. We're feeding it air now because where we're going, it's quite a steep slope. That'll save me uh, lifting the bin lift at the back. Plenty of clearance getting up that slope at the other end. Right, let's have a look, see where we can uh, hang this around. Probably sport for places on this, but might make it a little bit higher. We're setting out now from SW8 to NW10 across London. Just check nobody's behind me. Let's go a little too. So nobody's pulled up behind us. Let's go reverse 
slowly up along the, the curd line. Maybe on the curb as well. There we go, train inside. Right, we're gonna leave the beacons on for this, getting around here. It's a bit break a bit of traction on this hill it's quite slippery getting out of here so we've got to turn him right be nice if I can keep rolling but I don't think that's gonna be the be the case hopefully that one you can look can't go in there <laughs> think you wouldn't have come down our way no chance of that please let us go lovely Just gently on there coming off from the clutch don't want to spin the wheels Thank you very much. Thank you to the Power Day driver there. Everybody works together. Makes things a lot easier. Yeah, 11 foot 10 there. Uh, the dust car is, but you say it's gone up a little bit, but so is that 15-6 bridge that you know. So looking for a turning on the right. So I might fleet between uh, both cameras, see what the footage picks up. Unfortunately it's not a Arctic we're dragging through, it'd be a lot easier to see in the mirrors. So 20 mile an hour limit as well. Like most places around London. lane actually you can use that four at seven but we're going right anyway so I'm gonna need to take two lanes off a couple of taxis coming up the near side so we, that's the right turn we're gonna make according to the sat nav silver town road I'm running two here. I've got my truck sat now for the bridges and we wait and we hike and that's just the Google one just to give us an update on time. But so they're saying 54 minutes or something, 50, 51 minutes or something, and it's uh it's only 8.6 miles, crazy. I'm just saying it's just gone quite past three, so it's not even rush hour. Unfortunately, to go right, the right end lane would be the normal uh, procedure, but we're not going to get round, so we're going to need to, once we get rolling, she's going to let us in to the left. Blue car won't, silver car won't, red car won't, two in the other way. Right, here we go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's in a bit of a hurry. That's the beauty of London. Yeah, 
few little speed uh, ramps on this road but it does cut the, the corner off rather than going right up to the embankment by nine elms and down Yeah, we've got the boom quite high up and uh, the dust got quite well up on the air suspension so we've got no uh, problems of grounding out getting over these speed ramps and turn up here so the block two best we can right. so I just noticed the, the middle of the road tip left post these bus lanes here at any time so you can't drive in that bus lane unless you're a bus or a bike <laughs> or a taxi straight up through here I'm sure the junction's clear as soon as you get there the lights change there we go so this is why I come over Chelsea Bridge Still staying 40 odd minutes and seven and a half miles. Nasty little bit for a wear. So this is the same bridge that I uh, towed that double decker bus over to. Well, don't chance it. So 20 mile an hour again. It seems awfully slow at two o'clock in the morning, 20 mile an hour in London.
Look down here. Back. <laughs> Jesus. I've actually got my beacons on if if people don't realise. What and done me much good so far. So this is Chelsea Bridge. So we can have a quick look at you. A little link to left for you. Give me his phone. God, we've seen them all out of day. Had his phone in his hand and he was drifting across. Right, so we need to go on straight now. Left at the traffic lights. Try and take both up most we can. The trouble with London's take so long to sort of set yourself out for the manoeuvre. You're halfway through and the lights change so quick. Filming a little bit on the head cam a bit more to uh, while we're running along the Thames. That's where the Chelsea Shower Flower Show is to me right. a little bit more traffic along here now this part of the route towards Elves Court so you see the River Thames to me left quite nice wooden uh, barge massive barge actually got olive tree out the out the little uh, patio area it's worth a fortune here on the fort. I see the other ones looks a little bit decrepit that one at the end. I mean, nobody's in habit in that one. Right. Sure nobody's cyclist coming up the inside. Right. A little bit careful on these keep clear junctions, Donna. Like this, caught that in time.
Right, give you just a quick update and on the head cam. We say we're heading towards Shepherd's Bush now, so we're in uh, Ells Court, just crossing over the A4. And so, still got half an hour left of the journey. So, I'll put it back on the head cam and uh, see what we can find on this route through here. Good. Road ahead closed. Always a good sign. And gridlock traffic as usual. So the minutes are going up and up it's got to hang back here it's on the block the box junction what you find people in the outside lane will pass me and probably go behind that Mercedes like the one in front this is clear of the junction anyway couldn't do much else really then yeah looks gridlocked all the way through that does according to the Google Maps red So I might turn the head cam back off again because we ain't going to see much through here. Hopefully turn it on again when we get to Park Royal and uh, see what we can uh, see on the route then. Right, we're near Shepherd's Bush now at Holland Park Avenue. Heading out to the A40. Sort of turning left, heading out of London towards Park Royal. Yeah, it's the third job today. I've been around London, so uh, my left leg, oh, the brakes are clutch. My knee's starting to wake a little bit now. It's stop start traffic all the time. the other lane now nice. letting us go lovely thank you very much big Westfield shopping center to me left so I'll leave the head cam on now until we get to a destination it's not too far away see if the battery holds out Yeah, literally, it's not been a, a, lo a long uh, distance job, but for time-wise, it's taken quite a long time coming across London. A bit of luck, it's, time's getting on now, so hopefully it'll be the last job. So you're up to nearly four o'clock now. take them lights off now we've gone through the busy bit to get give us a bit of cover the beacon spot there's no point running the beacons up through this little bit now See how the A40 is running in front of us, seems to be running all right. I know it gets a little bit tight at the other end, uh, 
where the workshop is. Put the beacons on a little bit then to give us a little bit of cover. I think it's just three lanes. Is it two lanes or three? Yeah, I think it's three, three lanes going out on the A40 now. Okay, and we're probably going to get a bit of traffic now. People coming out of London, four o'clock. So I can't see, can't see many people as they're calling this fun. God. Very poor, really. Yeah, I think definitely automatic trucks have got their place now. So congested to traffic around here. So we're making our way out on the A40 now. So we need to get the other side of uh, the road. So this is Park Royal area. Yeah, I thought we'd end up getting a bit dark before we got here, so we probably want a bad shout uh, leaving the side lights on the dust cart. thing this time of night coming out of London uh, to make the way home it's probably going to be a good hour and a half so everybody's be coming out anyway let's see if we can get rid of this dust cart quick yeah basically we'll be going behind them towers and that over there Inside, all right. Let's see if I can leave the air cam on now for the last little bit. It's a funny little bit round here. Going round to the right. I'm going to get right over to the left. So the van's giving us a little bit of a space. We need to get into the left turn lane and a straight over lane leads to an 18 ton bridge, so probably be a little bit heavier than that. So, this weighs 20 tons if that dust cart's loaded to 26. Let's move forward a little bit. I might need a little bit more uh, persuasion, maybe, to let us go. There he is. Give me a little flash of the lights. Therefore, we've got to go now less than a mile. It's quite handy having the marker lights on the dust cart. I can actually keep an eye on that when it turn when I turn with it. Legs aching now. Right, 
right, let's get in sync and ready to go. Can't be too long, the lights. Traffic is still flooding through. leg of the journey yeah I've been around this little way before I know it gets a little bit tight so it's not helping with this cycle lane to the left I don't know what point that is I've got a cycle lane then go straight into a parking base bit tight here I just light it up a little bit with the with the top beacons Basically, the where the workshop is, we're taking the dust cart twos on a one-way road. So it looks like we need to take a turn in on the right and turn the road left, then left again to bring us to the top end of it. Turn them off a bit. No point having the lights on while we're not moving. down a little bit. It's a main set of lights further up, I think that's holding this up. Oh, let's pop in gear. And break off. Let's see how far we're gonna get now. Absolutely crazy in it, double parked a road like this. So we're back into that car on the left that's on double yellows. I don't know if the if they're all on double yellows or what. Oops, in you go. We'll be all right creeping through here along so having uh, got another truck coming the other way. It's definitely on double yellow lines here. We can get a bus through there. It's quite a wide gap. So we're going to need to move up as well. Let this car go in, it's clear then. Yeah. Can't quite see if uh, it's double yellow lines all down the side or not. Right, we're next turning right. So I know that's a little bit tight up through there. So we stick them on again. Use them sparingly. Can we get round there? Yeah, it should be out of since I've been down this road but I know it's quite a it's quite a tight turn at the end everybody's parked sensibly down the end we should be able to get around so there's no li um, limits on this road at all
a little bit tight for me out, so let's creep it forward in first. Tell just watch his wing mirror, mine. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, leaving your rubbish out there. God. See what that car's got. Alright. Oh, nearly there, left at the end. Just really, to make the left hand turn, we could do with getting over to the right, but a little bit, but I don't think. Get the windows down this side so I can, uh, a little bit better for you. A bit of a drop in the curb as well. Yeah, we're gonna need to go out fairly straight before we turn. Bike with no lights on coming up and a couple of cars. I'll just creep out a little bit. Okay, yeah, we're gonna need to go straight a little bit. There we go, and use that little driveway can pop in there a little bit. Let's see where that post has been knocked down. To the right, probably some trucks trying to. Do the same thing, get round the corner. Right, next on the left. Ah, that's what I was trying to bring me in this way anyway, because the road's like the road's closed up there. There you go. He's the waiting there for us, lovely job. He can block us in. There we go. There we go. Truck is working together. Here we go. You find it a little bit easier for tight situations to have the windows down a bit. You're listening out to a. Uh, HTC daft to the left. How busy are they? They're normally quite a busy little dealer. Not too bad, you can just about get in there. Alright. And we're on next turn on the left. Next yard on the left. So I knew this had a little bit of a slope, so we got the boom up. Suspensions three quarters. Yeah. The Merc part right in the end. God. So we're just gonna have to go deeper into the corner. I'm gonna get me loading lights on. Turn that rail off for a sec. Yeah, that's when you really want to rear steer now to bring you around. I'm gonna have to do a little shunt here. Literally, I can just got a couple of little inches before it jackknives a little bit. That's all you need. Otherwise, the pedestals will come back on the boom. Bit of grip problem here. Right, where's the, where's the one that can drop that? There you go. That's that is dropping the air off me rear tag onto me drive axle. That little button there. That's 
just enough to swap the traction over and get us up there right here we go thanks very much for watching as always and subscribing to the channel it's been a little while for the last one but i'll do try and film if i can here we go thanks very much catch you soon